let's talk more about the Newton second law. So in this video, we'll focus on one thing that is the lift, the elevators problem. First of all, let's think about this. Normally, when you stand on the floor, and let's say there is an electronic balance um, there, and if you stand on top of it, and let's say you are 70 kg uh, as mass, so what you be reading on your electronic balance would apparently simply be 70 kg. But the thing is, the electronic balance cannot really read your mass directly. What they do is actually reading, first of all, you have your own weight. At the same time, uh, you'll be experiencing the normal reaction. Uh, and both of them, since you are just simply standing still on top of it, then there will be both 700 Newton. And so what the electronic balance would experience, if I draw the free body diagram, would be simply the action and reaction pair of the normal reaction. But in this case, of course, it will be downward and the magnitude will be the same as what we said here, 700 Newton. And therefore, when the electronic balance experience these 700 Newton, and internally, of course, they may have different mechanism for electronic they may rely on some electrical component apparently uh, for some more mechanical balance they may use a spring inside so um, you can if you are interested you can try to investigate more but then the main idea is since if reaction force experienced by the electronic balance is 700 newton and they will convert it to um, the reading according to the scale um, cause Normally, the scale will assume you will be on Earth, apparently. So uh, they will kind of convert it back to 70 kg. So that's why the, the display will be 70 kg. Of course, here we are assuming we're simplifying G as uh, 10 directly instead of 9.81. And so another question that usually we will ask in uh, physics would be, so what if you are somehow successfully become an astronaut and brought this with you okay I, I again i don't know why you want to do that but let's say you become an astronaut you brought this with you to the moon so say well sorry for my drawing but this is moon i say and then what you do is you bring your beloved electronic balance and then you also try to measure your own mass what would that reading be then when you are on the moon. If you want to know about this, then you have to you have to firstly uh, know what is the gravitational acceleration uh, or gravitational field strength of the moon on the surface. So I'll label it as G M. Uh, earlier we have for the Earth that one as ten. I'll label it as G E gra gravity of Earth. So for the moon, yeah, you can try to Google it. But then I actually remember it is about one sixth of the Earth that one. So if I try to use this rule of thumb to remember uh, the value that would be ten divided by six roughly, that would be roughly equals to one point six seven meter per second square. So in this case, then what you have to think about is uh, for the free body diagram on your body. Of course, the case when you're on moon, then you will have, of course, still the weight, but then the weight will now become 70 times 1.67, and that should equal to using your calculator 117 Newton. Okay, and so of course, uh, you can quickly think that then the reaction force on you will also be. 117 Newton let me just write out for consistency and at the same time uh, I'm not going to draw but then you can also uh, imagine similar for the case when we are on earth the electronic balance will also experience the same force 117 Newton uh, by itself and and then internally they will convert the reading of 117 Newton to the reading by dividing it by 10 because the electronic balance would never expect you to bring it to the moon and use it right because I mean this is how it is so it will be uh, the reading will be 
seven yes kg so in that case if you try to bring the electronic balance onto the moon that means you will read this reading instead so apparently uh, you will think uh, that would be lighter the reason I talk about electronic balance is because um, to show you the reading may not be always reflecting your own real mass and that will be related to our question later on when we do the elevators problem so for now I will start to do the questions with you so if you want to do it by yourself you may want to pause the video now and continue afterwards a few moments later let's take a look of the question so uh, there's a man of 70 kg on the floor of the elevator and there is a uh, uh, you can imagine there's a electronic balance also um, uh, we also want to find out the force of reaction on the floor so when he's standing still of course actually there's nothing we would like to um, write in detail I guess I can everyone everyone should know that it will simply be 700 Newton just like what we did earlier and then for B it said it is constant speed so for constant speed actually it also means acceleration is zero because there's no change in the speed of velocity so in that case actually it would also tells you it is 700 newton also because there's nothing uh, simply when f equals to ma and when f is zero then the upward force and downward force will be the same that will be w and the normal force will be same in terms of the magnitude so 700 simply so the interesting part start with uh, part c actually with acceleration so uh, maybe I can draw the diagram right now so let's say this is an elevator and this is the best I can draw and say uh, I'll still stick with the electronic balance although it is not mentioned in the question so now there's a man and uh, we have the weight at this 700 Newton weight equals to and then there is a reaction force so in this case uh, then recall that reaction force would not be exactly 700 uh, what we have to do for part C would be um, that's right here would be F equals to MA and F in that case since we are going to accelerate upward right so let's simply take upward as positive and so in that case uh, the upward force is R minus w equals to the mass that is 70 and for acceleration that will be 4 positive okay because this is upward acceleration so yeah positive so if you like you can put a positive here um, or you can just write 4 if you want so then uh, we know weight is 700 and this would be 280 and so the reaction force would be 900 80 newton instead so if you have an electronic balance here uh, the reading would then apparently be 98 kg part d uh, it said it's moving down with acceleration so this time uh, well let's, let's just keep the whole thing the same then uh, we would have f equals to ma again i would always like to write the equation that i'm going to use so uh, it's really up to you like how you can write it but then uh, if we put upward as positive and then I will stick with what we have earlier then I'll still write R minus W for M is 70 no change that cause mass is scalar but for acceleration now this time it is moving down so it will be negative 4 instead so R minus 700 equals to negative 280 instead so this time R will 420 Newton so that in that case uh, if you have a balance then the reading will be 42 kg so you will kind of uh, appear to be lighter and the earlier case will be appear to be heavier in that case so that could actually be um, intuitively thing if you think about like when the elevator actually uh, elevator won't be accelerating that fast but then uh, imagine the uh, elevator quickly move and accelerate downward like that then uh, you will also feel that you are lighter also part e, e part e said it is moving down but then it is actually with deceleration so you have to understand what it actually means by moving down but deceleration 
So in our cases, uh, we define upward as positive. So moving down in itself is negative, but then deceleration itself is also negative. So this is like double negative. So in that case, what you can do for the uh, for part E, so acceleration will actually be negative negative four. So actually, what it means is simply positive four. So then uh, it will be the same case if you recall uh, as the case in part C actually so uh, then I guess you just repeat the whole thing and you should be able to find once again the R would be 980 Newton again as a physicist we sometimes want to generalize actually we always want to generalize all the situation as much as possible so for the elevators case that we learned just now uh, there are actually a few cases that we have uh, for the case that we are talking about. So for the first case is apparently it is constant velocity and that will actually means acceleration is equal to zero. Uh, it could also be at rest also. Right, that is part because at rest is simply velocity equal to zero always. So it's also part of the constant velocity case. The second case that we have is uh, we have acceleration that is upward uh, that could include accelerate like of course of course accelerate up and also decelerate down All right which we have seen in the previous example uh, the number three case will be acceleration is pointing downward that apparently is the opposite of second case that in, that means accelerate downward and also decelerate upward okay so um, these are the main three cases but then I would like to see a little a little bit more out of it so let's just analyze it again without actual numbers so let's say you have now uh, having the acceleration going up and we take upward as positive then according to what we did earlier then you have weight and reaction force on the person and so for f equals to ma then you will have r minus w equals to m times a so in that case the reaction force would then be simply ma plus the w and so since the w is actually mg so we can kind of group the m together and so then that will be m times a plus g so in that case actually depends on uh, the value of the acceleration so you can now start to uh, think about what if the acceleration is actually 10 positive meter per second squared so it's kind of like opposite of the of the gra uh, earth gravity and in that case then you may have m uh, with a is 10 and also g will actually be 10 also so in that case that would be 20 in total that will be the same as uh, you have basically we say uh, 2g of the force so because when you try to calculate then you may find uh, 20 times your m because normally for the weight it is your own mass times g and for our g on earth it will be taken as 10 so when you times 20 it will be like two times of your own weight but it is upward so in that case uh, we have actually a name in physics uh, we call it as 2g force because uh, g force in itself is the measurement of how many times of gravitational force that you are experiencing so 2g is uh, the word that we call in such a case so what if these become more extreme then so if you are not just accelerating upward with 10 meter per second but say uh, 50 meter per second square then this number would then become 50 plus 10 so that will be 60 so then it will be 60 times m and this will be 6g instead so that will be much much larger and that is as if you have uh, six more of yourself standing on top of yourself so what does actually mean by 6g then let me give you a figure 
for military fighter jet fighter pilot uh, they would need to go through a training because you know for jet fighter they would have to be very robust because they must have some kind of military uh, maneuver to maybe do an attack or chasing whatever uh, so the change of the acceleration uh, or the acceleration is in itself will be very quick so uh, for military fighter I mean the pilot itself uh, they have to under go under through the training of 9g so imagine if you are 70 kg then you will be as if you are 600 30 kg when you're experiencing the 9g force so that would be uh, requiring a lot of um, training to your muscle and to your whole body as well the main reason is that when you go through such a large g-force uh, say for upward then you have a uh, you may have a severe body reaction that is called the blackout so uh, blackout is simply when you imagine your whole body or you can imagine a balloon so normally when you fill in a balloon with water then this is how the balloon look like right but then if you imagine suddenly accelerate this balloon upward if you're holding this and you try to pull it up upward then the shape of the balloon may become something more like this instead right so you can imagine most of the blood in your body will be kind of as a uh, accumulate on the bottom of your body and not as much at the top so in that case for our our body that would be not as much blood in your in your eye or in your brain as well so in that case uh, those cells or whatever muscles that you're using uh, will be lack of the blood which means the oxygen also so then uh, that's why some people may have something called blackout which actually means that you simply can't see anything and your brain basically doesn't work at all so this is called blackout so what about the case for accelerating downward then uh, so let's draw the forces again so we have weight we have reaction force and now we are going downward so let's say we still take the upward as positive then in that case by using f equals to ma uh, the force would then be r minus w equals to ma but this time a is negative be careful so um, actually the whole thing is still the same idea where you have w on the other side and you may also change it to mg plus ma and you extract the m out so it will be g plus a equals to r but uh, in this case then the a would actually be negative all right because of uh, the situation we say acceleration is downward so this is actually a negative value so think about this what if the acceleration here is actually negative 10 meter per second squared um, and if you try to simply mathematically substitute into it you will find out since a is negative 10 and g is 10 and so in that case then we will have r to be zero in that case and does it make sense actually it makes sense think about this what it means by a equals to negative 10 here is uh, basically yourself and the elevator as well will also go down with acceleration of 10 meter per second squared that is simply what we said earlier as in free falling so you are simply falling with the elef elevator and of course uh, just simply think about when you and something on your feet are both falling down then you can kind of you cannot barely touch it so that's why the reaction force is zero because if you don't touch it then how can you have reaction force then okay so that would be um, what would happen but I would like to change the case to further like the next next thing I would like to, to think about is what if it is not negative 10 but say negative 20 then then if mathematically you try to substitute into it then you will find again you change the a to 20 so negative 20 then you will find what happened to reaction force will be quite strange because that would be negative 10 m then that would actually be like negative mg or negative weight so 
how can this be possible? Because when we say normally, reaction force must be pointing upward, so it should be positive. But then now you got a negative value, so it is actually not possible. Okay, so not actually possible. Uh, in our case here, uh, if you again think about what if acceleration is negative 20, uh, what it means is uh, you may have the elevator moving down with now 20 meter per second square. And think about the whole setup here. Your feet is not attached or harnessed with the floor or the electronic balance, right? So you cannot actually accelerate downward with 20 meter per second square. Uh, what you may do instead is um, you will simply fall as if what we have earlier that is a equals to 10 meter per second square. So think about this. What will happen if the lift, the elevator is falling down with such an acceleration, but you can only fall with such acceleration? What may happen would be worse than our previous case probably. Then what will happen is that your head, cause apparently the elevator will go faster than you downward, then you would simply hit onto the ceiling of the elevator then of course you will injure and get hurt in fact in reality there is a case a scenario where it is actually possible to have a negative reaction force but then we may not actually call it reaction force think about this uh, when you go to some theme park like in hong kong the ocean park there is something called the uh, i don't know exactly the name but then uh, some people may call it the drop tower or the free fall tower or uh, in Cantonese that is Tiu Lao Gay and what happened is uh, those machines usually will strap you onto the seat of course and when they drop they actually drop faster than free falling so they actually do not drop at 10 meter per second square they actually drop even faster so maybe like 15 meter per second 15 meter per second square so in that case uh, then you may experience a force that is uh, negative as in the reaction force here but then uh, the reason is that because of the strap so imagine you are uh, kind of um, hold I don't okay and my drawing is really bad. like this th imagine this is like the two two things that kind of strap you uh, onto the seat and so uh, what will happen is uh, they will actually have a force that pulls you down and that's why uh, it is negative but in our case when we talk about the elevator and the electronic balance the electronic balance cannot actually strap you down right so that's why you cannot have a negative reaction force here but then for the strap then it is fine because um, it can kind of go in either upward or downward direction so for that then you may have uh, a case like we said about and it will be possible to have a negative which means uh, the reaction force will be downward in that case Speaking of the blackout earlier um, for the acceleration going up, uh, for acceleration going down, we also have a like similar scope of uh, what will happen. But of course, it will be not blackout. We would call it something called red out instead. So um, just the same idea as in uh, for the balloon case. So originally, let's say the balloon looks like this. But then what happens when you have acceleration going down so largely uh, will be you try to pull the balloon down. And so in that case, uh, you can kind of imagine the balloon may have um, mainly the water here. Then uh, lead to water at the, at the bottom in that case. So you can imagine again uh, with your whole body, then most of the water, which is blood, uh, cause blood is like having much more of the inertia and it's also fluid as well in your body so then they will be staying on the top of your body so in that case which would be again your brain and maybe your eyeball and so in that case uh, you may have something called red out so in the uh, really worst 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 case uh, then the pressure in your blood vessel will be so large that it may simply break your blood vessel so again uh, this will take a lot of training you have to get um, maybe familiar with this or get used to it so uh, usually you are not advised to go as large acceleration downward in, in any cases 
Let's try to do this example. Uh, if you want to do it by yourself, again, pause the video and continue after. A few moments later. So here we have a man with a mass of 70 kg moving up with the speed. Um, not sure if this is accelerating. The elevator comes with the rest. Okay, so I guess this is more like uh, initial speed. This is like the final speed. This is the mass. This is time t, more like delta t. Uh, it asks you to calculate the reaction time of the man from the elevator floor during the period of deceleration. Okay, so uh, here once again we would have the man in the elevator and the force would then be weight and then there will be reaction force or normal force uh, and I suppose I will be using F equals to MA still we have uh, deceleration so let's take upward as positive once again so we have R minus the W equals to MA and uh, A actually we could well we don't have A but then we can find the definition of A which is V minus U over T assuming it is a constant deceleration so we would have uh, see if we have everything so R is something we want to find and W is uh, what we have so 700 M is 70 and then V is 0 U is uh, upward that is positive and then we take it as 3 okay and it, it makes sense because this is negative value and we are uh, having a deceleration here and delta t will simply be 2 so by using calculator you should be able to find the answer as 595 five newton and that's it very simple